Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us as we announce the winner of NASA's Exploration Design Challenge. I'm Heather McKay, a propulsion engineer with Lockheed Martin, and I work on the Orion spacecraft program. Looking at these bright young students here today, it reminds me of the moment I was inspired to become an engineer. My mom brought me to Take Your Child to Work Day at Lockheed Martin, and I met astronaut Bruce McCandless. Listening to Bruce talk about his career with NASA, I knew this was what I wanted to do. STEM events like this festival and the Exploration Design Challenge inspired me to pursue a career in engineering. And I hope this experience has inspired all of you and students across the country to do the same. We're fortunate to be joined today by some of the nation's top aerospace experts who have inspired many throughout their careers. NASA Administrator Charles Bolden, Marilyn Hewson, Lockheed Martin's President, Chairman and CEO, Mark Geyer, NASA's Orion Program Manager, and Rex Walheim, NASA astronaut for the Orion Program. These leaders are here to honor the five finalist teams in the Exploration Design Challenge, a nationwide science, technology, engineering, and math competition. These talented, creative students have worked hard to develop a design for keeping astronauts safe from the dangers of deep space radiation. Over the last several weeks, NASA has put each of these designs to the test, measuring how well each one performs in shielding against radiation. Today, we'll unveil the winning team whose design will fly and launch into space on Orion's first test flight in December. Congratulations to all of our finalist teams, and good luck to you in the future. It's my honor to introduce four-time spaceflight veteran and NASA Administrator Charles Bolden. Thanks very much, Heather, and, uh, and, and Marilyn, thank you so much again for coming. It's, uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here today, and thanks to all of you who have chosen to join us. Um, you know, our partnership with Lockheed Martin and the National Institute of Aerospace on the Exploration Design Challenge has been incredibly rewarding, and the best part is yet to come. Uh, Marilyn and I were talking earlier that, uh, you know, who would have believed that we'd be here today uh, when we started all this stuff back in Houston uh, in front of the Orion mock-up, but, uh, but we are here. And, and the next big deal is coming up in December, so, so we're all excited. When we kicked this challenge off last spring, I knew the excitement I personally felt at the Johnson Space Center was real. But I had no idea the depth and enthusiasm of the responses we'd receive. And I think every time I checked in to see what was going on, I was amazed at the number of students um, who were beginning to, to reply. Within weeks, we had, I think it was 35,000 students who had already come in. And, and that, that so greatly exceeded any expectation that I personally had, but uh, it has been great. In the end, more than 127,000 students of all ages from 81 countries around the world have taken part in the challenge. We received 46 formal entries from the most challenging portion of the competition, the high school engineering and design competition. That represents a lot of work by a lot of teams in a lot of different places around this country, all focused on the future of human spaceflight. That's amazing, and to me, it's, it's really inspiring. So to all of the five finalists, I say congratulations. It, it's been a pleasure to meet you all, but really quickly, so I hope that over the coming weeks, we'll have an opportunity to get to see you more and more, and uh, we'll see all of you down at the launch in December, because it's, it's a big deal, and it's going to be a lot of fun for everybody. Your hard work is really appreciated, and, and I know you learned a lot doing it. I hope that this, um, you know, this just is just the start of your studies in science, technology, engineering, and math. You're all outstanding examples of the power of American innovation. Your passion for discovery and the, crea the creative ideas you've brought forward have made us think and have helped us take a fresh look at the very challenging problem on our path to Mars. Um, it was interesting talking to a dad uh, who's, I don't know whether I'm trying to find him back there, but he, he, he was almost as excited as his son and the other students in the challenge. I see him back there. And, and we have some, own, some of our own ideas, so we may, we may challenge some of you teams here as we go along. Um, you know, what's unique about this challenge is that the winning team's design will actually fly on Orion's first flight test in December. Your work will be soaring through the Van Allen radiation belts on the first spacecraft built for humans to travel that far in more than 40 years. NASA always learns from every single flight, 
So we'll use the data we gather to move to the next stage of our work to send humans farther into space. Our finalists were announced in March, and I'd like to recognize the final five uh, now. Team Titan, Shielding Systems from Illinois Math and Science Academy in Aurora, Illinois. And you all can raise your hands or stand up or whatever the appropriate thing is to do. <laughs> Team Aries from Governor School for Science and Technology in Hampton, Virginia. And I'm going to get in trouble with this next team because I'm, I'm sort of a naval person as a Marine, and I think you may pronounce it different. You know, we've got Aegis Cruisers, but I think you pronounce your name, is, you pronounce it Aegis? See, I knew I'd get it wrong. Uh, so Team Aegis from Harriman High School in Harriman, Utah. <laughs> team Arion from Erie High School in Erie, Kansas. Not that close to Salina, I learned. And finally, Team Lore from Summit View High School in North Hollywood, California. And I don't know whether you, stand up again and then turn around and tell me if you can see the, the, uh, the you, that's, you're the one I wanted to stand up. Anyway, turn around there. This, this is the, I love this tie. Mike, sign him up. He's a Mike Hawes lookalike from the, from, the, from the chin down, okay? Well, just in here. <laughs> I know. Our goal with EDC is to ignite the imagination of students about the possibilities of space exploration. This challenge was tough, and so is exploring space. But great achievements come from taking, our, taking on great challenges. All of you students represent the next generation of scientists, engineers, and explorers. NASA is committed to providing STEM opportunities now that will help you to make valuable contributions to this nation in the future. One of you could indeed serve as a mission to Orion, on a mission to Orion yourself, uh, or in any of the many other paths our STEM can take you that uncovers knowledge and helps us reach higher. As I said, NASA is on a path to Mars that involves our commercial partners taking over access to low Earth orbit for cargo and, and soon crew extending the International Space Station until at least 2024 to help us learn more about living and working in space for the long term and demonstrating new technologies and providing uh, and proving new technologies such as the radiation shielding we're talking about today in deep space as we capture an asteroid, bring it closer to Earth, and then send astronauts to visit it. And finally, we head to Mars in the 2030s. All of you have helped us move down this path a little bit farther. I hope you'll join us for the rest of the journey, and I look forward to where we go from here. Congratulations again. Now, it's my honor to welcome Lockheed Martin Chairman, President, and CEO, Marilyn Hewson, to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Administrator Bolden, and good morning, everyone. Let me begin by offering my congratulations to all of the finalist teams. Each of you should be very proud of your achievement. You've demonstrated your talent, your hard work, and your ingenuity, all factors that are so important to the future of space exploration and scientific discovery. Someday, we'll send astronauts beyond Earth's orbit to explore asteroids and even plant an American flag on Mars. And you could be the ones to make it happen. Just think about that. This nation has been shaped by moments of great technological achievement, and each of you has an opportunity to help make that next achievement happen. At Lockheed Martin, we believe it's our job to make those moments possible and to inspire future innovators like yourselves to reach for the stars. That starts by investing in science, technology, engineering, and math education so students can pursue STEM careers. This nation is running dangerously short on engineering talent we need for tomorrow. In fact, studies show that we're facing a potential shortfall of one million STEM professionals in the next decade. If we want to lead tomorrow's moments of achievement, we need to invest in the new pioneers today. 
So that's why we're so proud to partner with NASA and the National Institute of Aerospace on programs like the Exploration Design Challenge. The Exploration Design Challenge has already reached 127,000 students worldwide, engaging them in real-world engineering challenges and igniting their imaginations about the endless possibilities of space discovery. And what better place to announce the winner of the challenge than right here at the USA Science and Engineering Festival? Among the bright minds that will join us here this weekend are the pioneers that will drive breakthroughs in clean energy, revolutionize global communications, and unlock the secrets of the universe. If we can set those young people on the right course and inspire them to pursue careers in STEM, then we've made great progress in securing our nation's future and ensuring that the United States continues to lead in innovation and discovery. Again, on behalf of the 113,000 men and women of Lockheed Martin, congratulations to the finalist teams here today. When Orion launches for the first time later this year, each of you can watch with pride and know that you played a role. You've already achieved so much, and I can't wait to see what you'll do next. So now I'd like to welcome to the stage Mark Geyer, NASA's Orion Program Manager to the stage, to, to talk about Orion's first flight and the role of the winning experiment, experiment will play. Mark. Thank you, Marilyn. You know, we do really have a really exciting year coming up with our first flight in December. Um, we're actually, I think, have demonstrable evidence that NASA is still in the exploration business. Uh, I have two sons who are in high school, same age as you guys, and uh, one day we were in the car and they were in the back seat talking about Titanfall or Skyrim or something, uh, Pokemon or something. And suddenly my son says, Dad, do you ever stop and think about how cool it is that you are working on a spacecraft that's going to take people to other planets. Um, of course, I know that. In my head, I know that. But the way he got to the core point, I think that's something that you young people do. You really get to the, the main point and remind us that, yes, there's a lot of interesting stuff. But fundamentally, this is really, really cool stuff. Um, the other thing I know from working with uh, people your age is you have a lot of energy. And you also question assumptions very well, right? Why are we doing things the way we've done them in the past? And both of those are very important for innovation, and innovation is key to NASA succeeding as well as the country in general, very, very important uh, qualities. But what is really exciting about what you've done is you're not just come up with ideas, but you've actually taken the time and taken your ideas and turned it into something, turned it into a real experiment, something we can actually fly on this mission and learn more about one of these key risks that we all have when we fly in space. And I know high school students are busy, homework, other activities, chores maybe, uh, maybe taking care of someone in your household, uh, maybe you have a job, so it's a ton of things going on and in spite of all of that, you spent the time to make that happen. So I think the combination of ideas and also execution is a huge skill uh, and it will lead you to great things. So I wanna thank you for all your great work and, and it's exciting to have you here today. Uh, next, I would like to welcome Rex Walheim. He's, uh, of course, Rex is an astronaut, so he gets to wear the suit. Um, but he's also a great guy. He's also the crew representative on Orion, so he's there when we make our big design decisions, so he's weighing in on those every day. He's logged over 566 hours in space and over 36 hours of uh, spacewalk time. Rex. Thank you, Mark, and good morning, everyone. Uh, this was a very difficult challenge you guys were undertaking, and all the teams should be very proud of your work. I've had a chance to look at it, and I'm really very impressed. Uh, part of my job as the uh, NASA astronaut is to represent the flight crew office, as Mark said, to the Orion program, and help make sure that our systems are safe and reliable for flight. And radiation exposure is a real threat. It's something we have to deal with in human space flight, and I've been so encouraged that you guys have taken such care and effort to come up with some designs to help protect our astronauts. And now I want to tell you a little bit about the Orion spacecraft and how each part is, uh, is designed and make sure that flight crews have a safe and uh, successful mission. You know, Orion is really made up of three parts, the service module, the, the crew module, and the launch abort system. The crew module is our living quarters. It's about the size of a master bathroom in a house, so it's not very big, so you've got to like your crewmates because you're going to be stuck with them in pretty close confinement for a couple of weeks, maybe even months. 
And uh, the service module sits below the crew module, and it has the propulsion, the power, and the life support systems uh, of the vehicle. Now, the launch abort system is a safety system. It's a, it sits on top of the Orion crew module, and its purpose is to propel the crew module away from the vehicle and, and safely in case there's an event of an emergency on the launch pad or uh, and during the initial ascent. Exploration Flight Test 1 is a very exciting mission. We're all looking, really looking forward to it. It's important for NASA, and we're honored to have all of you as part of our virtual crew on this flight test. And now, I think we're ready to have Administrator Bolden and Ms. Hewson come up and announce our winning team. Okay, let's see. I got you. We're reading the script here to make sure that we don't mess it up. <laughs> okay. And now it's my honor to announce the winner of the NASA Exploration Design Challenge. And I just want to say that all of the team should be very proud of your hard work and your creativity. You've already achieved so much, and we look forward to a bright future for all of you. After a thorough set of tests by our engineers, we've determined the design that performed the best. And now, aha. And now, will be built to fly aboard Orion's flight test in December. And the winner is, the winner is, Team Aries from the Governor School for Science and Technology, Hampton, Virginia. Thank you all for attending today and congratulations to all five of our finalist teams.